All right, so Jenny just got off the phone with her first real sales call. Yay! Uh, I asked to film it. She didn't want to. As opposed to my fake sales calls. <laughs> she was nervous, and so we I didn't was film it. But anyway, she just it I'll went let you super talk about it. well. So I had a friend, um, and she really, really wanted a desk. And I was like, sure, we can do that. And so I kind of like swung for the fence at first. I didn't know what her budget was. Or she the was too scared to ask for the money. I was a little scared to ask for the money, but uh, I laid out everything. Um, found out how long she wanted to last. Turns out she wants to use it for grad school. She wants it to last like two, three moves from now. One of those clients were like, it was really easy to work with because. She's like, oh yeah, this is what I want to look like. I want it to be this color to match all the rest of my stuff. And you're like, okay, yeah, I can absolutely do that. And then give them the budget. Yep, sounds good. Cool. <laughs> uh, follow up, I'll have so SketchUp much, for you in an hour. How much was it? 1500 1500 That was the budget we settled on. I told her to do 3000 but she wouldn't oh do it. Oh my goodness. Anyway, that's the thing is like, you don't you don't know how much a customer is willing to spend until you paint them a window and they tell you where in that window that they're gonna fall. So. You know, like we, yeah, we could have sold her a two or $300 desk, but we didn't know that she was wanting a $1,500 desk. Yeah, I mean, we didn't know that she wanted to make it two, three moves and go through grad school with it and everything. That, I mean, that's different. That is different. You're gonna want a desk that's sturdier. You want a desk that doesn't like indent when you write on top of it. That automatically means the top's probably not gonna be out of pine. And that's, a, so, yeah. that's the thing with a lot of the people that we work with is they move around a lot. And so a big selling point to them is furniture that doesn't get destroyed mm -hmm. by moving companies. Yeah. Now, of course, we can't guarantee everything, but- There's th a way to build it where you can, I mean, you can double up on your, there's a lot of stuff you can do, just yeah. little things. Well, anyway, so this will be a nicer build than what you've seen on the channel mm -hmm. in the past. So be kind of fun. For all of you that actually want to see some actual hardwoods that aren't pine, <laughs> This is your uh, this is your job. Here so, we go. <laughs> um, you asked for it. Yeah, we provide. Anyway, that and then later soon. Hey, start asking around. I want to build a big kitchen table, like a big farmhouse kitchen table, out of like ash okay. or something. So if you ever hear anything about it like that, keep an ear out. I'm gonna keep it all to myself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Bye. Anyway, aren't you excited? This yes. is your first sale. Like this is a rite of passage. Isn't there like an adrenaline rush that comes with it? I'm very happy. Aren't you like super excited? I'm very excited. Aren't you glad I convinced you to make this call instead of letting me do it? Sure, yes. Okay, Mr. Condescending. <laughs> <laughs> okay. If you have the, uh, the How to Sell Your Work program, you know about the magic hour. It's really not that magical, but it just keeps the sale from falling through. We're going to go do the magic hour, um, send them over the proposal, and then, uh, yeah. <laughs>
yeah, it's the next day. These have dried overnight and they're ready to be sanded. I took my sander into the house because our kitchen tabletop, the top started to split on one corner. So I just had to epoxy. I didn't have very many tools when I made our kitchen table. So I just had to put some epoxy in the split and then put it back together. And I was sanding the epoxy down and refinishing it. And I noticed my sander was pretty much almost dead. The motor was bogged down and I'm gonna take it apart and blow it out and everything, but I don't really have time to do that. I've got to get this done. So I went and got another sander. I went with the Bosch. Um, it just said it had the best dust collection. So I don't know, we'll see. If it really sucks, I'll take it back, but it's variable speed and then it has the supposedly really good dust collection. So uh, we'll take a look. But I, a question we get a lot of times is, when should you buy new tools? And I think that that's a really good, important question to address. Um, I think you should buy new tools when you need them. And I think I've talked about this before in another video, but if you're focused on saving money and, oh, I can, I can make this tool stretch longer, I can save some money, I can, like, you're no longer thinking about bringing money into the business. Now, don't go off and spend thousands of dollars on tools that you don't need or, or you know, don't have a use for yet. Don't buy an expensive tool and then use it all the time when you really don't need to on every project just to justify you spending the money on it. That's not a good way to think about it. Don't worry about the money going out of your business. Buy what you need to get the work done, but really, you should really be focused on, okay, when can I make the next sale? When can I bring money in? This is a good week for us as far as like lining sales up and I mean, we've got enough projects now to last us till the end of the winter and then well into the spring. So I went ahead, got a new sander. That's something I use all the time. Don't even think twice about it. Just pick it up. If it's going to take me more time to take the sander apart and clean it and put it back together than it is just to buy another sander, I'm just going to buy another sander. So remember, you got to think about your hourly rate too. If it takes you three hours to take this sander apart, put it back together, and then, oh, you put something back together wrong and now it really doesn't work. Now you got to go buy another one. You've just lost two or three hours worth of labor, you could have been working on projects, and then you had to go buy another sander. Anyway, just go buy the tool. If you know you're gonna use it, don't worry about it. You should be focused on bringing money into the business, not how much money is leaving it. And if you've got too much money leaving your business, just so you can operate to pay the bills, to pay for new tools, to pay for upgrades, then you're not making enough sales. If you're really worried about how much money that costs or that you can't afford it, you need to be focused on sales because the, again, the solution to not enough money is not to save it and hoard it and hold on to it. The solution is to put more money into your bank account. So with that being said, I'm gonna put wood filler in the edge grade of this plywood here. Yeah, we'll get it ready for paint. So I brought Jenny out here because I thought that this was a topic worth exploring. So on the note of new tool purchases. Um, like today, the sander, ours is starting to bite the dust. We've been thinking about getting two sanders just to speed up production for a little while. It seemed like a pretty logical choice just for us to get another tool, but there's obviously more expensive tools. And, and when do you decide to upgrade those? It, that, I mean, that's a big question for your shop. It's going to change. There's obviously a learning curve with any new tool. Even if it's something as simple as a drill, you're going to have to take some time to slow down and figure out how it works and try to adjust your workflow accordingly. I think for us, it's we use that sander so stinking much. Every single project we're using that sander on. And it's one of those things where you don't realize how much you use it. And then if it's ever to stop working, like what an inconvenience. You know, it's like if your dishwasher broke in your kitchen, all of a sudden you're like, you don't realize how much you use your dishwasher until you're washing everything by hand. Because um, hand sanding kind of sucks. So that's kind of where we were at. We're like, look, if this one dies and we're like mid project, that's gonna be a bummer. So when I was, when I, when we first started woodworking, how did I justify to you that we were gonna buy new tools? Like, I know I probably said a lot. I probably vomited a bunch of words at you, but what, <laughs> yes. what was the, what was the thing that like actually convinced you, hey, it would be worth it to spend the money on this tool? I think some of it is like the time saver. Cause at that point it was just a pain in the butt to be in the garage for, so long and have to do like the the long way of a process rather than having something that helps you do it way faster. Yeah, but that was when you were helping. I'm talking about sooner, like when we first started building stuff, how did I justify to you? Or like what made most sense to you when we spent money on tools? Honestly, it didn't make any sense to, to me. I kind of just let you do it. And now that we're using the tools a lot, I'm like, hey, cool. Now we actually use them <clears throat> to build other people things. But at first I, I didn't understand at all. It wasn't until we actually started building stuff for other people other than ourselves that I was finally like, oh, okay, yeah, this makes sense. Not, yeah. even, not even saving the money from like buying furniture? You don't think it was worth it then? I mean, it was worth it for little things like a drill or an impact driver or 
an orbital sander, but when it came to like buying a belt sander and buying um, the drill press, and it's just a bunch of extras, because at that point I didn't know how much woodworking we were going to be doing. I did think it was just personal little projects for our own furniture that we'd build in the garage. So anything that was like more than the basics or more than like what you would typically need, something that's a convenience. So it was really just the sales aspect of like, hey, we can actually get more money if we build things for other people that maybe yeah that's then that made sense. sense but if it was just gonna be like a little hobby in our garage i would i would get to the point where i'm like why we, we have a circular saw we have a miter saw we have a jigsaw so why are we getting a table saw or a yeah but i mean once we started doing a ton of projects and it made complete sense there you have it from the mouth of a wife if you make sales she will be more willing <laughs> to let you buy more tools so if for no other reason that you want new tools, start making sales. Yeah. So. All right, so Davis is finishing up these bookshelves and it's also gonna be used for somebody's cat. They kind of wanted it to work as both. Um, so I'm gonna paint them once he's finished. And then we also have a bridge that's gonna go between the two so the cats can walk between um, each shelf. So we still have to build that uh, and then we'll pretty much be good to go. So if this has been fun for you, like it is fun for us, we do have some courses that teach you how to get out there, how to turn your woodworking hobby into a business. We'd love for you to check them out. Um, it's a really awesome place to get started. So look in the description below, we have a link down there where you can find uh, each of our courses and check them out. But don't worry, if you can't afford the courses, we're gonna continue to put out free content here on the channel. So just hit that subscribe button. Please give us a like. It's absolutely free to you and it helps us out a ton. That's the only way YouTube knows that they should serve our videos to other people is if you hit that like button. So we greatly appreciate it if we've earned it. Thank you so much. Have a great week.